Is it possible to build yourself a top of the line 17 inch MacBook Pro for less than $3,000? The answer is yes. We're starting with a basic MacBook Pro, a 256 gig solid state hard drive from Crucial, a SATA to USB cable, which we're going to use to clone the original drive, which is actually in the machine at the moment. And this is the software that comes with uh, to enable you to do that. At the same time, we're going to replace the existing memory, which is tiny, with these two uh, 8 gigabyte memory sticks, also from Crucial, which will give us 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is more than Apple says you can put in, but I don't believe them. I think we can put 16 in without too much trouble. We'll find out. So to recap, what we have is a 17 inch MacBook Pro, a 256 gigabyte solid state hard drive, two 8 gig memory sticks, which we'll be replacing the standard memory sticks with, and all for less than $3,000, uh, which is quite astounding when you consider the price of buying this from Apple Direct. The first thing we need to do, while you're watching how much money I saved, is clone the hard drive. That's yeah, pretty boring. So we're going to open the, uh, the MacBook up, plug in the, the new solid state drive and clone the old drive. I'm not going to make you watch me do that. So we'll skip straight to the next part while that goes on. Sadly, the next part is also rather boring. We to remove all these screws, holding the button plate on, and remember where they go because they're all different lengths. Having removed the screws, the uh, button plate pops off nice and easy. Uh, we've got two jobs to do. First thing we need to do is remove the existing memory sticks. They're pretty easy to take out. They're, they're sprung, just pop the levers off the sides and they will pop up and you can pull them out, no problem. They're only held in with minor tension. Before we do that we just dissipate any uh, static electricity we may have picked up, pop the memory sticks up and pull them out. As you can see they come out fairly easily. Um, not a great deal of effort involved. Now we're going to replace the two memory sticks. As you can see they, they pop in fairly easily, just finger pressure, push them in one on top of each other. Um, it's amazing how small these things are. There you go, now they're, now they're clipping. Once we've done that, I'm going to replace the, the hard drive. Before we take the hard drive off, first thing we're going to do is uh, unplug the battery, which I've just done. Then we need to take these two screws out that uh, hold a little plastic plate that holds the dry hard drive in place. As you can see, they, they won't come out of the plate. You have to remove the plate itself. Once you unscrew them, it just pops off and then the hard drive will pop out of the bay and unplug the cable. And what you saw there was a slight delay while I went to fetch a Torx screwdriver because I discovered that there's four little Torx screws in the bay that need to be removed, taken off, and put onto the new drive. Now the drive will sit back down in the bay. Um, well, the old drive was, obviously, just popped into place, and uh, we need to then replace the, the, uh, the bar that holds it in place. And of course, once we've replaced the bar, um, we need to then plug the battery back in, and replace the casing. All in all, it took about three minutes work if you uh, 
discount the amount of time it took me to go and find a Torx screwdriver in rural France. Uh, in fact, I had to have one made. <laughs> At the bottom of this article, you will also find a couple of capsules with links to Electronic King on eBay, who I bought the machine from, and Amazon, uh, who I bought the memory sticks and hard drive from. All in all, I saved over $500 doing it this way, which was more than enough left over to go and buy myself Final Cut Pro X and Aperture.